legendary status. Vic XL, Sam Pisa, aka TF. When y'all gonna learn, man? You can't stop what's inevitable. It's the incredible. Peasy AKTF dropping jewels, but they edible. I ate my vegetables, but he ate my spinach. Riding with Vic again, so no, we ain't finished. Legendary status, so no, you cannot copy. Riding dirty radio, so crispy, y'all so sloppy. Instant to the street, so we know just what is needed. But keep it underground, staying down, cause we ain't greedy. This is where you find what is popping for the culture, where we keeping it all fresh and stay away from all the vultures. No, scavengers here, just keeping it real. Think got it out the mud, but it's still so clear So sit back, relax, and just let us lead you If you're trolling for no reason, then we don't need you It's Big XL, he can't be stopped Riding dirty forever, the home of real hip-hop Boy, Vic Excel. This is Ryan Dirty Show. Where we bridge the gap between hip hop and everyday life, man. I gotta say, welcome, welcome, welcome to my humble little boat. All right, man. What's up, to the good people over at WRFG 89.3 FM? What's up to the good people at Live365.com? All right, let me tell you a little bit about RFG. WRFG 89.3 FM and now that is our official. FM Radio Home. You can catch us every Thursday night, Friday morning from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. All right. Live365.com. We partnered up with Live365.com last year, and we launched our very own internet radio station, which is in t- which is called Ride95. Now, Ride95, we're the home of what's next in hip-hop and R&B. The way to access us is easy. All you got to do is visit Live365.com. Go to their search engine. In their search engine, there's over 2,000 stations of all genres. Over 2,000 stations of all genres, okay? Now, go to the search engine, type in R-I-D-E-9-5, that's Ride 95 click on the station logo, and there you have music 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Now, if you want to check us out via your mobile device, it's also just as easy. All you got to do is go download the Live Pictures Pop app, go to the search engine, type in Ride95, click on that logo, and again, music. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Okay? Check us out, check us out, check us out. All right, one time for all the good people checking us out on Facebook Live. Love you guys. Y'all could be doing anything else, but you're checking us out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're not going to delay you any longer. Y'all know this platform. This is a platform for people who are changing lives, changing the world, whether it's through arts, entertainment, music, philanthropism, entrepreneurship, or just being a downright good person. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, tonight is no different. So welcome to the Riding Dirty platform. Artist Jesse Dross. What's going on, my G? What's good? What's good, man? Thanks for having me, G. All right, man. The first thing I got to ask, man, is did I pronounce that name correctly? Because I'm known to tap an artist's name. Yeah, Jesse Dross. Yeah. Okay. You said it right. All right. Now, Mr. Dross, the first thing I want to say is I'm humbled and honored to have you on the show. Thank you for taking the time out to, um, you know, just let us take a journey in the life of Jesse Dross. And introduce you to all our fans. Yes, I really appreciate it. I, I'm honored for you to have me, honestly. All right, so, man, let's get into it. The first thing I always like to start off in my introduction and taking this walk with the artist is let the people know where you're from and what was your introduction to this thing we call the music business. 
So um, I come from the DMV, um, mainly the DC part. Um, really, music. Like I grew up, I grew up with music. It's like been like it's in my blood, really. And um, I honestly started like making music through a tribute group. And like we wasn't really making songs, we was like doing like other like other people's songs, like new old older songs, like new edition and um, Michael Jackson songs and stuff like that. And then um, yeah, that just built into me um, wanting to like take it seriously on my own. So I always had that um, that music IQ. Okay. All right. Now you say you was in a, a tribute group. Um, for, just for the people who are not sure, tell them the definition of a tribute group. Um, a tribute group is like a group that like performs like other people's songs, not really like original songs of their own, but just like um, just like other people's songs, like cover songs. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now, what was it like being in that tribute group? What was that like? Um, at first, I really wasn't into it. Like my friends um, encouraged me into doing it, but like it told me um, a lot about teamwork, um, building a bond with like other people that are like in the music as well, and like uh, like more than just like a friendship type stuff, so, like family and then yeah I just I felt the, I guess I just found the love for it after that okay what was the name of the tribute group and who were some of the groups y'all covered um we didn't even have a name we um we was just a group that was just we was just it was just like four of us there was there was just it was like four or five of us and we was just all cool together and we was um, just a tribute and that's how we just started. Our parents thought it was a good idea. We never had a name though, but Okay. Yeah, we um we did um we did perform um like I said, New Edition and um um the Jackson Five. Um, okay. All right now now, I've talked to people in tribute groups before, and they say the one cool thing about being in tribute groups is if you're doing their songs correctly, um, it's almost like having an instant fan base because it's that nostalgic value. Uh, what was the experience like for you, and what was the crowd response to you? Uh, it we had, when we performed, we had a, um, we, we, we had a good, like, yeah, we had good chemistry. Like at the beginning, it wasn't like as well, but like we had to like build that that chemistry. And um, yeah, not really. We ain't really um, we ain't really performed that much though. Okay. That's like when the group, cause when the group, yeah, cause the group had like fell apart like after that. Okay. Now, what was it like? Yeah. You, you mentioned being from a DMV. What's it like being from the DMV from an artist? Mm -hmm. What's it like being from the DMV from an artist standpoint for you? Uh, um, uh, it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's like, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to, Stay in your own lane, I would say, but this is just from, this is my opinion. So, like, it's kind of hard. I say it, it's kind of hard for people to, like, stay in their own lane because uh, some people may, like, like this way more than just being yourself or just having something new over here in a DMV. But... Okay. Other than that, it's it's a it's a whole lot of it's a whole lot of talent over here, for sure though. But I think it's underrated because, like, just I don't know. 
I can't really explain it. Okay. Man, let's talk a little bit about that name, Jesse Dross. That's a, that's a definitely original but different name. Tell me the origin of behind your name. Okay, so the Jesse came from um, my first um, name being Jesse or pronounced just Icy, but I just made a nickname for it because I wanted to keep it like, I wanted to make my name more like original and more official. So like, I, but I still wanted to like have that, that and something like that in my, um, in the name still. So that's what I came up with the Jesse and the Joe fast for do real over sham. And that's just my life motto. All right, now what's that again? Do real over shaft. Okay. Just and being real, just like being solid, saying solid. All right, all right. Now, how long did the group stay together, and how long was it before you started to pursue? Four about it. I'm sorry? Four, four about a year. Okay. It started, it started. Started and then it ended for about a year. It was like 15, 14, 15 years old at this time. All right. Now, what made you decide to, you know what, I'm going to step out and do my own solo thing? Um, well, eventually, after that year, the group had um, broke up. And um, me and uh, um, another member out of the group, um, Bell, he's, we have a group together. We still are, we still are a duo. Um, it's name, our name is Jew Bell. That's J-U-V-E-L-L. You can find us anywhere under that. But yeah, we had the, we had thought to continue the music thing and the, um, and the entertainment, um, be, being in the entertainment industry, excuse me. And, um, yeah. That's pretty much, and that's pretty much how, like, it's just been carrying on ever since then. Like, I still, we, we, we still, I still drop stuff um, under the duo, Juvel, and under myself, and Bill does the same thing. So. Okay. All right, now, what's it like, or what's the difference when it comes to being an artist in a group as opposed to being an artist who's working on your own thing? What's the differences for those people who are out there contemplating, should I be in a group or should I just work on my own shit? I think, I think if you, if you, if you end up in a group and like you have that, y'all have that relationship, y'all have that chemistry, and it's okay to still do your I think it's okay to still do your own thing while you're in that group. But like if you're like not in the group not in the, I s I wouldn't I wouldn't encourage like finding to be in a group with somebody because like at the same time your work ethic might not be the same as the others and then that that makes more problems and more conflict on other stuff. Okay. All right. But when you when you like solo, it's more about it's more about you. It's more you can focus a little more. Okay. And have way in control and have more way of life. All right. Now, let's talk about you as an artist, your style. Like, what can people expect when they hear Jesse Drops? The I will. Really, really don't know. I, I, I try to not be as predictable. I try to do better every, every new, every new, every new content I put out. I expect it to be way better than the next, than the last. Okay. All right. Well, when you think of fan base, do you expect your music to resonate more with the fellas or more with the ladies? I think it's more unisex. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm I'm a guy. I'm a guy. At, but at the same time, like I'm good with females too because I've been raised around all women. So 
that feeds into my music. Like I do, I do some, I do, I make music for the guys, and I make music for, and I make R and B music as well. Okay. All right. Now, when I was reading up on you, you're described as a hybrid artist, and your music rotates around trap, mm -hmm. R and B, and adult contemporary. All right. Now, those are three completely different lanes. Explain how you've been able to intertwine all three. Uh, really? That I, it's like growing up, I listened to all kinds of music. My mom and my dad, they put me on to like so many like different kinds of like genres and stuff. But, like, to mind you, like, I really don't listen to, like, music. Like, these are the songs, like, that they play around me a lot. Like, I just, I wake up to it and I go to sleep to it. So, like, I think that's where, like, I get, I get my sound from picking up those sounds from me growing up. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Now, how how much of influence is your, your parents to your actual pursuit of music? A lot. Okay. All right. Now, a whole lot. All right. Now, speaking of influences, because I haven't asked you this question, like, who are some of the artists that influence you as an artist to be the best artist you possibly can be? Uh, some old artists like Eric Claudu and um, you know. Michael Jackson and some new artists as well. Travis Scott, Drake, Jay Z. Everybody that's pretty much where like I where like that are that pretty much are successful in the music industry. As far as. All right. All right. Now as an artist, they always say it's good to have a <clears throat> small, a, a small term goal and a long term goal. What are your What are your short term goals and what are your long term goals? What are my short term goals, like personal or musically wise? Uh, musically. Musically, okay. Short term goals, um, just building a fan base for right now. That's really like my my biggest short term goal, and my long term goal is hopefully to get a good contract. Okay. All right. Now. We're good. Yeah, good. Year. All right. We live in an era that. The World Wide Web and social media is very prevalent. It's almost like everything that happened is on the internet quicker than it's on the news. How has social media and the World Wide Web affected how Jesse Gross reaches fans and gets his music to places he might not ordinarily be able to? Uh. It, it, it's a lot easier. Like, like ask, ask that question again, because I, 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 I heard the, the last part, but not the beginning. All right. I'm going to ask it in a different way. How have you been able to use the World Wide Web and social media to market yourself to the masses? Maybe that makes it a little easier. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. I use... um. Yeah, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Google Ads, anything I can really. Um, I find different, love my um, local artists, local comedians, local dancers, anywhere I can put my music in somebody's face. Even if I have, even if it's a, a chef. And they need music in their background. 
All right, so you're open to let other people actually share your music and, and use your music in other areas? Yeah, definitely. That's dope. That's dope. All right, now, I noticed that um, a while ago you posted that your music uh, strike is being played on FM radio, man. What's it like being able to hear your music on on, on the radio, a lot of artists often talk about hearing their song on the radio. What's it like hearing your music being played to the masses? Honestly, it's crazy because I don't know. It's just it's just overwhelming, I guess. And then I, it's like I'm a big credit to myself. So it's like, okay, I'm just on the radio. I'm not really like too turned up about it. It's just like I. Right. And at least I I know I'm going I'm on the right path. All right, all right. That that's that's a very very humble approach, man. Because I've heard people say, man, when I heard my song, I stopped the car or I cried or or you know. But being a a big critic of yourself, <laughs> being a big critic of yourself, mm -hmm. what do you feel like as an artist you need to improve on the most? Uh, probably my wordplay, my my speech more, vocabulary wise, starting to read, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think I got it down pretty much though. Like I've been, I I ain't too hard on myself. Like I I'm I'm still ten toes. Like I'm still. Training myself to be better than what I am now, but like I I I, I feel like that I'm I'm a hundred percent ready. Okay, no doubt, no doubt. And doing this more than five years now. Okay, what's next for Jesse Dross? What's next? Oh, um, Trouble music video coming out soon. Real soon, featuring Devin White. Shout out to Devin White, by the way. Okay. All right, now tell us. A little, we're gonna play the. We're gonna play the joint Trouble, but tell us a little bit about the record, the concept, who wrote it, who produced it, and what can we expect. So, um, first off, shout out to um, Aaron Beats. He made that. He made that beat, and. Um, I wrote the song. The concept was literally what happened in a day when my um me and my girlfriend was like getting into it. She was just um she just tired of me get coming in the house late, but you know how it is. Gotta get gotta get mine. Okay, alright. Now how did that situation turn out for you? How did it end? And then me calming her down, talking her down to it. And then, you know, of course, making a song, showing her the song, making her smile. Okay. My last question, man. Would you consider yourself a mm -hmm. rap artist, an R&B artist? Like, what do you consider yourself? An uh, artist. So you rap, sing, all in one show. Yep, I, I'm a creator. Okay, that's that's dope. That's dope. That's what I do. I create. I create music. All right, my G, do me one big favor. I want you to tell the world how to yep. find Jesse Dross when it comes to the World Wide Web and social media. Definitely. You can find more about me at jessiejoes.com. Follow me on Instagram at jessiejoes. That's J-U-S-S-Y-D-R-O-S. J-U-S-S-Y-D-R-O-S. E. All right. Last thing, my G. 